Welcome to Popcast Deluxe, your 70% grasp on the English language of weekly cultural review. I'm John Caramonica, a critic at the New York Times. I'm Joe Coscarelli. I'm a reporter at the New York Times. Um, theme week. Uh, some interesting things happening in reality television. Uh, a passion of ours. This is a passion of ours. Uh, we're going to be talking about the most recent season of Love is Blind, season of Traitors, current season of Survivor, some big picture reality TV ideas. Uh, this is your comfort, I know. There's a lot of comfort for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are we in a new golden age of reality television? It's a real, it's a legitimately fair question. I can only possibly assess that question by <laughs> taking a sip from the Popcast mug yeah. uh, on Zazzle. I think we're in a new age of sentience about reality television. Yeah. Um, it's really like reality television has come alive. I do think like the intersection of real life and reality TV, the way that those timelines play with each other has created a new framework for what a reality television show actually is, particularly in the dating space. Yep. Um, so, so also in the trader space. Yes, absolutely. Lots of social media. Which I, I know less about. I know more from about the, the participants themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. that's really what we're seeing. We're seeing participant participation in social media, but also discovery, fan stalkings, etc. Yeah. So should we start with Love is Blind? This is scary. It is scary. This is the rest of my life. Time will tell if I'm bride to be or bride to be not. All rise, please. <sighs> now, this is more my thing than your you thing. You love this show. I, I mean, what's not to love? You've seen all six seasons? Yeah, I've seen all six seasons. Um, I think the thing that Love is Blind is understanding now is obviously the emphasis on the post game sure. to the to the pregame. Falling in I think maybe seasons one and two, it was like very romantic. It's like, damn, they're really falling in love in slow motion. Like <laughs> extra slow yeah, motion. Like yeah, like really slow motion. Yep. And now it's kind of like, yeah, 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 let's just hurry up and get to it. Let's get to the, let's get to the honeymoons. Let's get to the fights. Let's get to going back to Charlotte. <laughs> very, let's very quickly go back to Charlotte. Is this, here's, here's my first question. Is Love and Blind an act of violence against second and third tier American cities? All of reality TV is, is about, when it's not about the big city, yeah, when it's, it's not, about yeah, when it's not the hills or yeah. when it's not the city. Shout out Whitney. Uh, the real stories are out are in between yeah um i i do feel like there's been some narrative and there always is of like oh people are just going on the show because they want to get famous mm -hmm. or they want to become an influencer or so and so forth. and you have to think if you are in charlotte yeah like a, an attractive person in charlotte mm -hmm. but you're like this is where i've made my you're life charlotte eight yes <laughs> or a nine but like you think this is where i've chosen to make my life there are not loads of opportunities for you to really level up did you and then love is blind like helicopters Damn. into town yeah. right and says you and your relationship go get stuck in the pods like and how can you resist did you clock on clay's vision board the tiktok logo yes yes <laughs> like that's what we're working with. Honestly, the most coherent thing about Clay <laughs> is the vision <laughs> board. All right. Just in case someone does not know the, the experiment. I also love that they insist it's still six season in on yeah, calling yeah. it the experiment. Like, imagine how many times the producers say, no, 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 not show, experiment. not game, experiment. Uh, well, frankly, <laughs> like, in contrast to- Does the scientific ma method cover- <laughs> Well, there's a bit in contrast to married at first sight, which actually does feel like much more of an actual experiment like there is some academic somewhere cooking that up but like love is blind is just all right the structure of love is blind okay two sets of pods like rooms isolated rooms lined up against each other men on one side very heteronormative yeah, men no, on one side i mean gay, yet. gay love is blind is gonna pop off absolutely um men on one side women on another side uh everybody dates each other but cannot see each other and the premise is that you will fall in love from the dulcet tones of jimmy's voice <laughs> yeah J jimmy jimmy's voice did work honestly did more work than the rest of his body <laughs> <laughs> uh so it's uh, like speed dating but without seeing each other right until you settle into 
I'm dating two or three a people, flow. Right. right? Like I found someone I connect with. I found someone I could tell my about my dog, so on and so forth. Uh, and obviously, people choose partners that they would not probably likely choose in the real world. Uh, you agree to be engaged, and then you meet. Uh, you are presented face to face, and. I would say two thirds of the couples, maybe more, are like, hey, you're so beautiful. You're so cute. Like, you're so handsome. Yeah. And then there's always like a slight percentage of like, mm, what did I get myself into? I mean, like the, the bit, like the gag of the show, the elephant in the room is like, you're going to fall in love with someone ugly and then you're going to have to wrestle with yourself. Like, yes. that's like, that's at its basis, that's what this show is, right? Yes. Like, you're like holding your breath when they do That's finally That's the point, get is you're holding breath, although you obviously know as the viewer. But you're still like, uh, is this person going to lie or, they, or am I going to be able to tell that they're lying? Do they lying? look like Megan Fox? We got to litigate this because Chelsea the has answer, gotten, the answer is yes. Chelsea has gotten unfairly. The answer is Do yes. we want to do this right now? Yeah, let's just go right to it. The main external <laughs> news cycle about this yeah, season of Certainly Love is Blind, in the first wave, yeah. Is that Chelsea, Has one of the contestants, told. claimed that she looked like Megan Fox, which she did not do. She said that she had been told. She said, I don't think this. People only say this to me. She at was my, being she modest. She said, people only say this to me at my job. Don't get excited. <laughs> say it. It's, uh, MG, I don't even know if it's MGK's wife or her, his girlfriend. Megan Fox? <laughs> Are you saying it was like Megan Fox? It's just because I have light eyes and dark hair. That's the only reason. There's nothing else. But she, she was lying. She couched it. But she was lying. A lot. The couching was lying. But he heard, I look like Megan Fox. And the couching was lying. Because you think she does. No, the couching was lying because I think she thinks that the answer is yes, but she didn't want to be like, I look like Megan Fox. Yes. She. Set she it up hedged. fairly. She pre-hedged. She hedged very fairly. I, I totally agree. Jimmy heard Megan Fox and he's, the, you remember the first thing he says, can we get married? Yes. Like, this is the other thing. The great thing about this exchange is before she says Megan Fox, do you remember this? Mm, tell me. She says, it's MGK's girlfriend? Yeah, wife? Yeah, 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 yeah. She identifies Megan Fox via Machine Gun Kelly, which, welcome to 2024. Uh, you mean pop punk pioneer Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly? <laughs> yes. She resembles, you know what she Thank means. Thank you for your service. <laughs> you know what she means. Absolutely. In a way that everybody who thinks they look like a celebrity. Sort of. Like, like it's not, it doesn't mean like you are the celebrity. Yeah. If you, if you were Megan Fox, you, if you invented you like Megan the Fox, way that a young me looks Megan like Fox. Toby Maguire? Like, a, <laughs> like, not like that? Yeah. That's like way more Fine. real. Fine. I'm just saying. <laughs> She did a lot of things wrong on this show, but she did not oversell looking like Megan Fox. He I, says he says she lied to me. Yes, but also like Jimmy's relationship to truth telling and kind of like I, All right. Jimmy's feeling he feels sure. um, very put upon. Yes. So anyway, there they are get out of the pods. <laughs> they're, they're engaged. There are five. So there are five couples that make it out of the pods. Now, I can't imagine what it's like to be stuck in pods and sort of think that your only escape route is to fall in love with Megan Fox on the other side of the thing or alternately to fall in love with Jimmy. Right. Um, but they also get to hang out with their... With the other... The guys hang out with each other yeah. and, like, have a little bit of testiness with each other. The women hang out with each yeah. other. Have a little and bit they're of testiness. competing. Yes. And do you feel like I feel... Because I used to feel this on, like, extremely early seasons of American Idol. Mm. When they got to the top 24, I'd be like... Only eight of these people are really the winners. Right. Like the other people are there strictly so that they could be eliminated without there being too much stress. Do you feel that out of the 15, five to 10 are essentially sidekicks? I mean, I didn't, I don't even think they re they get to sidekick level. Like you just don't know who they you are. Only, I only think of them as sidekicks because in the after part of the show where they're like all hanging out, right. they'd be like, oh, it's my girl from the pod. And you're like, <laughs> who? Who? <laughs> exactly. They're only there as sounding boards. That's they sort need of, to be that is what they, standards. I do feel yeah. like definitionally there's some number of people each season and their entire job is to be the BFF. But. So anyway, sidebar, just throwing that out there. Some people become characters because then they leave before the coupling. For instance. Shout out, Matthew. The greatest character of the season. Honestly, I haven't seen nearly enough. We should qualify this. We're taping this. Unfortunately, 
about a week before you're going to see it. The reunion show is tonight. If Matthew comes out, like try to court AD, if he comes out with the flowers and like, I'll, I'll be sad that we didn't get to talk about it. But Matthew should be the bachelor. Like the Matthew arc. Phenomenal. Short. Um, Short but powerful. <laughs> like Matthew. Yeah, yeah. No, Matthew. I is he like tall? He's, he's diesel, he's but is he built. tall? But is he tall? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's hard to tell. I always, I did, I always want They're the always gag. laying down. Like <laughs> everyone on Love is Blind. Everyone on Love is Blind is just like. And then uh, in the confessional. They'll be like, uh, my job is so bad. Yeah. In the confessional, they're on the chair, and I always want the gag to be like they stand up and like Tory Lanes are shorter than the <laughs> chair. Chair, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we'll just play that. We'll just play that clip. Really quickly. Um, I don't know Matthew's height. I really hope he comes at the reunion. We'll know by the time yeah. you hear this episode or watch it on YouTube. Please do like and subscribe. Just like and subscribe. Yeah. Um, but his arc was phenomenal, um, and I love how he's like an outcast both among the women at first and then also with the men. He's really taking advantage of the notebook. So they all have a notebook with their name on it. And he like, like, like the did. Love Island water bottle. Yeah. And like, I want a forensic accounting of everybody's notebook. I agree. Like, That's, I feel like, like, why is that not bonus content? Or why can't, you know, like uh, every season of Survivor, you can buy the props. Yeah. Why can't I buy the Love is Blind? Matthew's Blind? notebook. <laughs> I, pay, I pay a few hundred bucks for that. But I feel like there's definitely a lot of them that are like, teenage moleskin vibes where there's like someone's name on the first page and, and then like hearts on the second like, page and, and then, then nothing, nothing. <laughs> you know whereas like i feel like some people are really taking notes to remember who's who and how they feel about each person before they get to know them really and up until this point the only post show matthew arc is he went online and left a comment on some video that was like one of the things that was really challenging for me is i am sober and i went through this experience sober so that made it doubly hard for me to connect with the other men who were like by and large people are drinking twisty, there's a lot of wine absolutely twisty um also the gold glasses right. someone did a deep dive on this i don't remember have you read this deep dive yeah i remember it from a couple seasons ago yeah, right? yeah so someone did a deep dive on the, go the gold glasses which is i assume are designed to obscure who's drinking and who's not drinking and what they're drinking, what they're drinking. Yeah. it's reminiscent uh, of the and as are the notebooks the love island water bottles uh you know just a constant prop and you're yes. like is it straight vodka is, is it gatorade are they just staying hydrated in and, the and also the, the, sun? the glasses follow them out into the world right. like at restaurants <laughs> like can you imagine like part of the contract with a restaurant is like we have to film at your restaurant here's one thing though a non-negotiable deal point popcast mug <laughs> yes <laughs> coming Good. soon um so okay as someone like i watched this more than you do Tell me, you have never watched I have. Season? I've seen maybe two of the other seasons, oh, okay, parts okay. of other seasons. I find the show quite boring. It like as a, narrative. Yeah, it takes a really long time to get going. I'm not especially moved by the casting. It's very Netflix reality show, like in the way that Netflix shows all have like the same sheen. Mm -hmm. Netflix reality shows and the type of people they cast all have a, a matching sheen. Like they really have a, there's a vibe. Because even the people who feel like outlier characters to me, who are the main characters on this show, somehow have been sanded down. And actually, you don't like, for example, like Laura and Jeremy this season. Like, I feel like as things were unraveling between them, you really saw the intense of the the intensity of the weirdness on both sides. Yeah. And yet somehow that had been smoothed out, or Jerame, as I've been taking the call it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah Jeremy French. spelled like <laughs> Gary the Golden Bachelor. <laughs> yeah. Just like, like totally. Literally. That's not how you spell yeah, the name. No. <laughs> it's like it's like literally drawn from like a, a French uh, population registry somewhere <laughs> somewhere in like the south of France. And, and you're like, oh, like twenty times every episode, and you're like it's yeah. a typo. <laughs> also, you know, people like um, Amy and Johnny, who again, it's like almost can't get a fix on them. They they're great, just they seemingly had a great relationship. Yeah, they're like the they're the winners. There was no content no, from them because no. they never fought. No, literally. Well, except about uh, maybe fertility. Johnny. Yeah, maybe, or maybe Johnny is not aware of the existence of condoms. <laughs> the the birth control conversations were strange, and it really felt like they were like, we don't have a plot line for these people. Please keep talking about this. And they, it, it was like tied to his early retirement dreams. I mean, great. I, <laughs> who can relate? Uh, um, okay, uh, let's talk about Brittany and Kenneth really fast. Okay, so... There ends up being five main couples. Brittany and Kenneth, that make Johnny and Amy, uh, Jimmy and Chelsea, uh, Clay and AD, 
This is impressive. Jeremy and Laura. It's impressive. Jerame and Laura. Um, and I will say, Love is not blind for very long in this show. No, of course not. And it is a much better show. You were for alluding it. to this once they get out of the pod. It's absolutely like, to me, look, we're so deep into reality television and into dating reality television. I no longer believe in the pure way that I did in like early seasons of The Bachelor that people are genuinely going to fall in love. I now understand that the reality television show is, for most people, a way station out of Charlotte sure. to something a little bit bigger. And look, maybe someone will F around and fall in love. That might happen. It might last. You know, you might have a Cameron and uh, oh man, Cameron and his wife from the first season. Sure. It could happen. Uh, Married at First Sight has had a couple of real successes. Obviously, The Bachelor's had some successes. But by and large, I don't view it for that anymore. And so if you are not fully invested in the falling in love, it's hard to really feel much in those first two or three episodes, especially when you, as the outside observer, are looking at Clay and AD or alternately Matthew and AD, right. and AD is absolutely losing it, and you're sort of like, sis. But then it becomes quite a good documentary about relationships. Yes. It's like a, the show is as if Hometowns and uh, Fantasy Suite episode of The Bachelor was stretched out yeah. and like slightly more verite, yes. like less zhuzh. Yes. And I think like- With some contrivances with, of being in a room with all your exes. With all your recent yeah, exes. Yeah. yeah, but like it is, I do think- in a way that I appreciate a lot of reality TV, like it's reflecting back, like the fights feel like real fights mm -hmm. that average couples have. Yep. And it's like a pretty good, and it like holds its gaze. It just like, they, the fights go on so long. Yes. And it's just like, we're just going to let these people work through it. And you watch them be mad and you watch them get madder. You watch them come down. You watch them try to say, I still love you. You know, it's like, it's, 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 Good documentary television in moments. So to me, the main quality fighting on this episode on this season is is Jimmy and Chelsea. Sure. Um, Chelsea needs what appears to be a tremendous amount of consistent affirmation. She's very insecure. Yes. Specifically Jim around her looks. Yes. And Jimmy does not speak of the full English language. <laughs> Like, does not have a full complement of vocabulary words. He's a twang like 20% of the time. Oh yeah, no, no, yes. He's well, like, but a, like I couldn't like get Mark a read. Ronson. I couldn't get a read. Of it. <laughs> it's not transatlantic, <laughs> though. I'll say that a British toy. <laughs> um, yeah, Jimmy. One thing that I, I I truly was struck by during this season. Look, you're in a relationship. I'm in a relationship. Like I've been in a relationship. Oh, we're going there. No, no. I'm yeah. just saying, like, but thinking about <laughs> the nature of fighting and the nature yeah. of disagreement. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be some small portion of disagreement in any relationship where you're just like either mishearing or not quite grasping what the other person is saying. And then you're reacting to that misunderstanding or misapprehension. Yep. And in a perfect world, you sort of immediately like walk it back, unravel it and say, OK, that not or that like. It's not what you meant. It's not yeah. that. OK, I can in through the nose, out through the mouth. We can undo that. I watch these people talk to each other. And I'm literally like, how do you know what you're mad at? Like, no one here is <laughs> forming complete sentences. Everything is fragments. Everything is suggestions or nods or like, mm, you know, it's like some combination of sounds and short words. How do you know what you're mad at? Like, I'm at the point. I'm like referee. You're hyperverbal. I know I am. <laughs> but like. I think this is the welcome to the world. That's how. That's just how people are. Hasn't. Two decades of reality television taught you that? This feels like a low. Really? I, I, re I mean, look, I watch a more lot. More than The Bachelor? These people seem more emotionally intelligent to me than the majority of contestants on The Bachelor. I don't even know if I agree with that. Okay. I mean, I've watched The Bachelor in a few seasons, but like, I, gen I, I couldn't have been more shocked over and over again watching Jimmy f attempt to form sentences and constantly Chelsea being like, I'm mad at that thing you said. And I'm like... I don't even, I need a translator. Like I, do, how, I did watch with the subtitles. Did you? Yeah. It probably helped. Yeah, it did. Um, also, Cle like Clay, yeah. just the wet, like talking with his eyes constantly. And 
never having a complete sentence, like starting on one thought and then immediately pivoting to another one, then yep. immediately an AD just like, I'm rocking with you. I'm rock and I'm like, rocking with what? A lot of um catchphrases from everyone. Oh. Like you really see, especially like I've been watching some older reality television simultaneously. I've been doing a big below deck mm -hmm. binge and like starts, you know, 10 years ago yes. or whatever. And you see, and same with Survivor, like you really see the evolution of language and how like internet homogenized people's speech patterns and idioms are now. Yeah. Like you would, you just didn't, you just didn't get the same level of like slang catchphrase yeah. in previous generations of reality TV. Whereas what you're saying, yeah, like everyone is speaking in like shorthand, like, you know, uh, Laura is a big, a big one of these, like everything is like, like TikTok brain, uh, in a very intense way. Yes. Creating, I wish you the best. Same. Go kick rocks with open toed and shoes. I do want to go back to one fight that carries through the season for Chelsea and Jimmy that I thought was both very graspable, but also like rubbing up against the line of like how immoral is this show and reality television in general, oh, yeah. which is bringing in his yeah. friend from home, his best friend who has a cameo. Okay. But low key, when that cameo happened, you the, knew the first thing I, I was sitting on the couch and I turned and I said, one of them, like I just, two I just female like, best friends, just put a marker on it. They're presented as sisters, basically his sisters. And then later in the show, in a heated moment, she says, I know you had sex with one of them. And he says, what are you doing? I told you that off camera. This is one of my deepest, darkest secrets. I'm protecting her. Yes. I'm protecting her. And now it's out there mm -hmm. for everyone. And that's like that. That basically breaks them up. He's like, I cannot be I cannot marry someone who is immoral, who did this t to me and to her like that. I when we'll get to Clan AD, because that's the other main through line of the season. Yeah which also has some heavy, like, should I really be watching this moment? But, like, that was... Real. That felt real That felt you. real. That's interesting. That didn't feel as real to me as the sort of, like, not fully verbal fight where he's like, can you imagine? The right one is like, calls you clingy? <laughs> no, it, yeah, so that was pretty straightforward. No, but there's one, like, <laughs> right before the end where he's like, can you imagine getting married? And, like, I kind of feel like he's setting her up for a yes, and right. then she gives a yes, and then he, like, flips it and turns it into a no. I mean, but and that's like, the whole no, I know, climax of the show. But it's again, crazy we'll to me. To. I'm like, how do people not know how to, like, lead narrative conversations with each other? <laughs> no, they, the, apparently answer is, don't. the answer is no. The answer is no. Um, yes, I agree that that was, it was good television, but it felt... He was off camera for most of that. That or fight. He was like behind a, behind. Like behind a yeah, wall yeah, yeah. or something. Or yeah. like in, a, in, in the, the bathroom, bathroom or something. Yeah. Um, to me, I maybe it's because he was holding back a little bit. Well, because he didn't want to over yeah, it. He didn't want to have to drag it out. Dragging the, and you the, know the cameras are there. The central narrative of the show becomes about somebody who didn't sign up to be on the show. Like who agreed to be in a scene, but was supposed to be a superficial scene and then became... But also maybe Loki wanted to... Like, this is the other thing. It's like... I haven't gone to her social media. Charlotte, look, I'm just saying reality television in Charlotte is a hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just saying, if the, your one opportunity to be... If that's like... It might have been a lane. Yes. And maybe maybe that person wanted to inter interject themselves into the mix. Maybe they wanted to be a spoiler. You wanted to talk about the earlier breakup in the season. Yeah, Brittany and Kenneth, who basically made it about 20 minutes after the honeymoon. <laughs> because he wouldn't get off his phone. He wouldn't phone. get off his phone. And, like, <laughs> honestly, like, who can relate? He was like, I'm so happy to have my phone back. <laughs> I mean, Couldn't... he wasn't looking at her. Like, he would not register that she was speaking to him. No, and literally would, like, be on his phone while... And, like, frankly, who amongst us... I'm not saying I've never done that. I don't do it a lot. I've certainly been in, I've certainly experienced that from other people. It's yeah. not a great feeling. Uh, the other thing about Brittany is I felt like, look, from what I read online or saw on TikToks, there's a chance that the actual breakup scene with them was filmed, yes. pr was purpose filmed. It had already happened off camera. Right. Um, like a lot of great reality television. We were to inform you. Um, <laughs> Re but, yeah, reenactments. Yes. But, um, yeah, Kenneth did not seem interested. Kenneth wanted a friend. He got a friend. Yeah. Uh, 
today or yesterday they put out a TikTok together, yep. implying that they were occupying the same space, hanging but, out. Yeah, but like it seemed like promo for the reunion. Yeah, it's probably. I feel like it's unlikely that they are together. Yeah. Yep. Um, also, they're both like twenty four. Yeah, that's the other thing is like people and most of them are like 28, 29, Way 30, too 31. young to be getting married. Um, twenty four and twenty five is crazy work in this in this, in this context. Age. It's crazy yeah. work. Well, that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Matt, do we do you want to talk more about Matthew or want to go straight to Clay and AD? I think Clay and AD is Clay and AD is back. good, but that's, here's that's the real that's the plot. That's AD is a star of the season. AD is a star of the season, and it's important maybe before we talk about Clay and AD. It's important we talk about the moment where Clay realizes that the other person who has purchase on AD's heart is Matthew. Yeah, he's shook. He shook for a couple reasons, and it's great because he's sitting there. He's in the middle of a – there's three guys on three seats next to each other. It's him, it's Kenneth, and it's some white guy who's, like, clearly there to be the sidekick. And Clay is, like, upset. He's, like – He's holding, he's trying not to cry. He's like holding it together. He doesn't understand. He's like looking at Matthew, who's like a very like bookish looking, socially awkward white guy. Yeah. And he's like, manager. and he's looking at himself and he's like, you know, like I'm a star athlete, like swagged out. It's like, like come this guy. Right. He's literally like this guy. And then he's like, what does this guy have that I don't? It's like he won't what say anything. Don't I have? Like, what do I like? Is, am I am I wrong about AD? Scrambles like, his brain. It absolutely does. But my favorite moment was he like he like looks at the random white guy. And he's like, I'd understand if it was someone like of your caliber. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy is like, yeah, yeah, I know. And I'm just like, for, like nice <laughs> save, but no. <laughs> there is. I do like that. In, and he didn't say anything to Kenneth right. pointedly in the in the Nick Lachey. Who's the host of this yeah. show uh, with his wife? With Vanessa uh, Manila. In the, in the tagline where they're like, they, they do say like, will race tear them apart, basically. In their list of like four things yes. that might break up a couple. Yes. Uh, which we, and we did, we got some. A taste of that with Ray and Kath. Uh, this, this season. And with um, Amy and. Uh, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. very glancingly with Amy and Johnny. Yeah. Um, 80's the star. Um, my favorite post show ad revelation quote unquote and again it's like the tiktok ecosystem for love is blind both from the participants themselves uh from people digging into their social media past from people who know them exes, popping up. Yeah. exes getting interviews to random podcasts i mean the number of podcasts about love is blind talk about award winning there should be a there should be a award for best love is blind pod uh spoiler podcast Someone said that during the entire six weeks of the experiment, AD never worked. Why would she work? She said she has two jobs. I didn't know they were supposed to be working. There, yes, that's like Clay. The whole, the whole, the whole thing between oh, them yeah, was yeah, Clay's yeah. like, I've got to go gas up my yeah, jet skis, right. and then she, yeah, sure. And but that was like, it didn't no, no, seem, but, it didn't seem like they were working full time. <laughs> no, 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 of course. But like the point being that like, there's a point where Clay is like, I didn't totally understand her finances. <laughs> I mean, we'll go. Yeah, that's, no, no, I know, that ends but up I just, being his his ultimate red flag. <laughs> like when just, when he <laughs> when he. Does the cruelest thing that's ever been done to anyone on television to her? He's like, I didn't fully understand her finances. <laughs> like something that he never previously mentioned. Finances, I kind of looked at it, brushed it off. But finances is huge to me, and I don't really understand her finances like that. Let's get to the alt. Let's Talk let's to get the to guys. the altar. These Clay two, and AD, yeah, we'll skip Amy and Johnny. Only Clay and AD. Doomed from the start. Literally, AD presents herself as someone who is always in the position of saving or rescuing a man who is not good and not, not good enough, but not ready, not ready to deliver what she needs, not ready to give to her the level of commitment she and says, also like, emotional sucker. Yeah. Emotional sucker that she provides to others. Part of the reason she was attracted to Matthew in theory is he was the opposite. He was a little dry, but he was the opposite. He was going to be sturdy for her. Clay in the early episodes, very clearly plays in her pro like into her problems, quote unquote. But as Matthew disappears, she just immediately pivots and is like, I'll be your rock. I'm going to support you. I'm going to love you regardless, yeah. even though you're through your failures. And he's literally like, I might cheat. And she's like, <laughs> I'm going to love you through your failures. I've got your he back. He says it like a hundred times. Literally. It's, do you think he cheated in track two? Do you think they're having to like run the tapes? 
I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying he was very adamant that he was going to cheat. His father would be very disappointed. Or <laughs> so part of Clay's narrative is that his father cheated on his mother. Yeah. And his father used to bring Clay like on missions, infidelity, and, infidelity missions, and make Clay keep it secret from his mother. Right. Which apparently he told his mom during this taping, and which then the mom confronts the father about like, one of the best scenes of the season. And of reality, like it's like this is this is what I mean when like every now and then it would hit on what felt like something real, so true, real documentary yeah. about love. We came from broken families. That doesn't mean that we have to pass on that brokenness to our kids. Absolutely. You can stop, yeah, you stop the bleeding, stop the cycle. Right. Your past and things that you witness is part of your DNA. It's part of your inside. And if you don't get freaking help, you bring that shit to the next thing. Him interacting with his father, you see like him become a little boy yep. in the presence of his father who has screwed him up mm -hmm. by his own telling how much love he has with his mother and then his mother and his father who are divorced yes talking about their failures and how they've passed them on to their son yeah uh which is just like yeah I mean, she was after the altar i mean we'll talk about what happened at the altar but after the altar the mom says to the dad like essentially what he did up there that's that's on you you did that to him he carried your bs up there with him so anyway at the altar when did he decide? He's smiling and happy and acting like he's gonna. That's what I'm saying people don't have grip on narrative. When did he decide that he, he decided was like three say weeks? No? Three weeks prior. But then what is he doing? <laughs> Pretending like he's gonna marry us? He had TikTok on the real, TikTok on the vision. Board. Is that a real marriage? Like, does that is that legal or is that like for the show and you're gonna get married after? I think they are. Is it binding? I think it's binding because they do the marriage. They do get a marriage. They license. get a marriage license. I think it's binding. Okay, he does a runaway bride on her. Like he literally says no at the altar after giving the, the his vows, giving after the yes. giving his speech. But this isn't the first. To be fair, this isn't the first time that that has happened on Love Is Blind. But his demeanor, because he doesn't understand. Like his, he speaks in automaton speak. Like he doesn't speak in affectionate speak. He speaks in automaton speak. I, okay. I, I genuinely thought it could go either way. Here's the thing. As I'm watching him talk, I was I like, I knew no. what was going to happen when I watched it. Because you spoiled it. I had, found, I had seen spoilers online. Yeah. So I was watching for the exact moment like that he, like, that he stopped pretending he was about to marry this person. Uh -huh. and, and never came. And said, and it came literally like half a second before he said, like, I can't do this. <laughs> but that's, I feel like that's part of the love is blind proposition. I, I. I, n she. I mean, he ruined her life. No, he saved her life. Are you kidding me? He okay, absolutely he saved ruined the her lives life. of the of her nieces. But that's who were children. Wait, you're sure you've watched this show before? I've n I've never seen it like to that. It, it felt so. I've seen it, bad ones. That bad? Yeah, I've seen bad ones. I wish I could remember. I had. I wish I knew. I would have planned differently. But like, I've seen bad ones, and also. The thing about Clay, and actually this she is... She wanted it so bad. No, 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 but here's... This is the thing about Clay, <laughs> is I think Clay was like, how can I be super player about this? I'm going to walk right up to the door, and then instead of saying I'm opening the door, what I'm going to say is, actually, how about you come to my side of the door? Yeah, he was like, we're going to keep dating. We're going to keep cool. dating. <laughs> like, there's that part after them, after the... um, uh, After he dumps her, where he goes to see her in the, the suite or whatever, and he's like... Do I really have to leave? Like he really was he like, really I thought a, it was cool. He really was like, I'm gonna get away with it. Like I'm gonna get away with it. Like I'm I'm such a catch that she's gonna absolutely consent to my uh, extended timeline. Which like, which I, and to be fair, look, yes, there is they a should keep dating if they want to get married. This, but also like there is a universe where, frankly, if you are a better communicator. Perhaps in this context, you could say, you know how I feel about at you. At the altar? Yes, at the altar. You say, you understand how I feel about you. I understand how you feel about me. You understand that we're in a strange circumstance. You know I'm committed to you. That said, don't you think it would be better if we took a little bit more time? We say no to each other right now, and then we say yes down the line. That's an option. I think I've seen people Colton try. Colton pulled that off on The Bachelor. So it's not impossible 
It's just not within the reach. It's not within the... You can't, disc- like, do it after you exchange rings. No, but it's know? not within the discursive reach of this particular group of people, I don't think. I found it to be earth-shattering. Really? <laughs> Followed by the... the with the one, two of them, the, the parents' conversation. I guess afterwards. I was just so relieved for AD. Okay. Like, I genuinely... Like, look, AD, obviously, uh, a person of incredible emotional quality, yeah. um, but who... Uh, I think has a bad pattern has a bad dating. is rightly asking herself, why am I choosing these people? But I think is just getting from the point of why are these people treating me poorly to what is it about me right. that is seeking this kind of, and now she has the game tape to watch literally over and yeah, over and over. Again. Absolutely. And hopefully this can be part of the thing that allows her to identify whatever that pattern is. Um, so I did not ha- I was not heartbroken at all. Like I was literally relieved on her behalf. Like obviously it's heartbreaking television, but I was just like, this is how it was supposed to go. It never should have gotten to that point as it didn't for most of the other couples. Look, that said, if you found yourself in the Charlotte area, would you <laughs> like, rent? Come on, would you rent a jet? Would you rent a no? Charlotte. Would you, would you rent a jet ski from Clay? <laughs> you think this is all? In service of his small business? I'm not saying he was in service of it. I'm just simply saying, would you rent a jet ski from Clay? No, I'll never give this man my business. Not for what he did to those little girls. Here's, okay. <laughs> Here, they're just like, it's like cut to the crowd. And these children are just like, you can do that? Have these children never watched reality <laughs> television? By that age, if it was me, I would have already seen like 20 reality television. No, that's absolutely nonsense. Here's what I think Clay should be doing. Clay should be doing Love is Blind, behind the scenes, jet ski vacations. I think if you rent a jet ski for two or three hours, it includes 30-minute Q&A session with Clay where you can ask him all the real stuff. <laughs> You're going Speaking of business. faith, here's the thing. Speaking of faithfuls and traitors. <laughs> that's your That's, that's my your coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, AD and Clay, that's an ultimate faithful and traitor pairing. And just throw them on season three, season four. Like, Love is Blind contestants should be thrown into the ring to be on the traitors. Certainly the ones who dump people at the altar. <laughs> yeah. You think he could pull it off? I don't think, like, it's No, so I don't think Clay can pull it off, but yeah. I think I low key think Jimmy might be able to pull it off. You, you would make Jimmy a traitor or a faithful? I would make Jimmy a traitor. <laughs> no way. He can't I, lie. No, but it's like he can't tell the truth either. <laughs> like Jimmy's relationship to like the 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 truth value of words is nil. Like it's not that he's lying or not lying. It's that he actually just doesn't know what he's saying at any given time. And most people would literally be like, "What do you think Jimmy's on?" And people would be like, "I have no idea." It's true that some people on the traders are too bright to be on the show and like it sort of breaks the show in in various ways i'm gonna take care of her once and for all there's no friendships in this game i find you highly annoying it's just a ton of chaos hold on to your kilts deities the games are just beginning (laughs) too much I had not seen, so we're, we're, we'll pivot to Traders now. I had not, I did not see, I still haven't seen season one. Okay. I only watched season two at your urging, at Karen's urging. A number of people assured me that I would love this show. Really? I don't think I assured you because I'm, uh, I have, I'm of mixed opinion of the oh, show. Oh, okay. Or I think assured it is, me I would be interested in the show. I think it's worth watching. Yes. Did you disagree? I think I ended up really liking it, but. It was a slow. It was a slow start for me. The first two or three episodes. It really doesn't kick in until Dan really kicks in. So anyway, let's talk. About, explain what Traders is, and I'll explain one flaw in the conceit that there's a lot of flaws in the conceit. That, but, but that really ended up, I think, proving to be a challenge for me over the course of the season. But explain what Traders is. So this is a Peacock show. This is I, I subscribed to I Peacock. I cannot believe you didn't have Peacock. How do you watch Below Deck? On Bravo Linear, oh, you have like or, a, a, a or on Bravo. demand or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the second season just ended of a Peacock original. You're a cord cutter. Uh, you have no cable. <laughs> I have no cable. Seriously, I've never had cable in my life. God, it makes me feel like I have YouTube TV, which is basically cable. I don't even know Not what that spawn. is. Oh wow! You okay? We'll talk. I about I would this love after. YouTube TV. Maybe it's great. Subscribe um, to Popcast while you're on it. <laughs> yeah, you, it's not. It's not YouTube. <laughs> not to be confused with YouTube. Um, 
this is a show that's been ongoing in the UK and in Australia. Okay. And what it did in the second season, which it didn't do in the first, is essentially cast all reality TV people. The thing that made the with f- a couple of exceptions, was, meh, but like they're they're in the they're like notable. Right, right, right. They're not randos. They're not randos. No. In the first season, which I watched because it featured a few Survivor players, namely Suri, uh, mm-hmm. Fields, a, yep. a Survivor legend, mm-hmm. um, one of the great game players mm-hmm. of all time, and it was half reality TV people and half regular people playing a game where they live in a Scottish castle, allegedly Alan Cummings. I haven't done the deep dive on like, do they actually stay in a hotel or like, are they really staying in the castle? Oh, interesting. Like, what's going on with the right. set? Uh, it has like a campy medieval, you know, fire broomstick. Alan, it's like Alan Cummings, uh, really serving as the host serving going just going crazy absolutely going dummy <laughs> with the looks going absolutely dummy and the lines and the you know i mean really playing into yeah. it but also like i think the looks are like authentically good the right, lines right are the obviously overwrought but like yeah. the lines the, the looks are authentically good uh but in the first season it was really interesting to watch regular people get worked by somebody who's played survivor three or four times yeah sure you know and that Some people were fans. Some people were randos. And this is a game where three-ish people are made traitors. Uh, The rest of the cast doesn't know. They're referred to as faithfuls. And the traitors are murdering people behind the scenes. Yes. One one night. One per day. One person per night. And also, the whole cast is voting in front of each other who they believe a traitor to be. Yes, trying to banish them. So basically, two people leave every episode. They're trying to weed out the disloyal people. Uh, the audience knows who everybody is. And if a traitor makes it to the end, they're earning money and challenges. And if a traitor makes it to the end, they steal the pot. They steal everything. And if only faithfuls make it to the end, they split amongst themselves. Correct. Inelegant game. The gameplay of this is a Funky. mess. It's the, funky. The challenges go on way too long. Yeah. They're not real challenges. Like, it's sort of like the mole, which is... I was thinking a lot about the mole. A yeah. huge mm-hmm. uh, favorite of mine from childhood. Also, shout out Anderson Cooper Anderson and Cooper. shout out Alex Wagner. Yes. Shout out Alex Wagner. Slept on. Incredible. Late both, mole. both hosts of the yeah. mole. Mm-hmm. Um, the mole was interesting because the mole was actively trying to harm them in the challenges. And I sort of was wondering if that was going to come into play, but obviously the... Be, if the incentive is that everybody gets money regardless if they're a traitor or faithful, everybody's incentivized to get money. Yes. So it kind of ruins that, like, active, the potential for disruption. And the the challenges are largely fake. Like, they basically always basically get it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of jokes about the clock. Yes. Uh, it's, like, the longest seconds yeah. of all time mm-hmm. to allow them to always get the money right at the buzzer. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense. The game... It's it's similar to early seasons of Survivor in that like it's very primitive right now. Like you don't know whether the traders should be working together or apart. The voting is like pretty random. There's not this season, the second season. There's not a lot of str- also. There's not unlike Survivor. The thing about Survivor that obviously is so refined at this point is people understand the power of alliances. Yeah. I need three votes. I need five votes. And voting blocks. Yes, and that is alliances. not really come into play. And I thought this show, this season especially, I'm like, by halfway through, I'm like, you guys should be forming gangs and cliques. And they and sort of did. It happens, but th- then they're everybody's yes. mistrusting each other yeah. and they're falling apart. But it's not quite as dramatic as it is on Survivor. Yeah. So second season comes out, it's Basically, all reality TV people. And so, the former Speaker of the UK House of Commons. <laughs> yeah. Shout and, out, my And then a random boxer. And yeah. Deontay, what, who left? Because he was crying. <laughs> he was crying, constantly crying. I haven't Googled this, but who is Kevin? <laughs> Why is he there? Yeah, Bling Empire. <laughs> okay. But he's like an actor. They, no, they... but he's, I mean, he's in the family that Bling Empire focuses on, and then he turned that into acting, Okay, I believe. Uh, I am not, I'm not up sure. on that part of the Bravo Nation. Big Housewives contingent, both notably, seasons, and notably. they upped it this yep. time. You got Phaedra, you got Sheree, mm-hmm. you got Tamara. Yep. Last season had Brandy Glanville, mm-hmm. um, and then Survivors. Yes. Parv, and Parvati, and Sandra. Big Brother Dan, a couple Janelle, of Big Brother people. The Challenge, CT and Shell, and Real World. It's funny yeah. that they're only identified as Challenge people at this point when, like, their oh, yeah. their roots are in the Real World. Yes, that's true. But at this point, I mean, look, yeah, see, sure. I mean, can I just take 
20 seconds to say CT is one of the greatest athletes of the 21st century. Yeah. On the challenge. Yeah. Just like, and I don't, I don't mean that even like hyperbolically yeah. at all. Like this is where we play the CT Johnny bananas back to back, like thing where he like, this kid's a monster and it's going to take everything that I've got to weather his storm. I don't care who it is. I'm just going straight for the barrel. Get this party going. All right, boys, keep it clean. You ready? Go! I was going to say, are you a Johnny Bananas guy? No, it's CT all the way. He got, he got banished right away, so I didn't really get to know Johnny Bananas. Are you, do you not? I haven't, I haven't really. Ta I mean, I used to watch some challenge, but I'm not like a I'm Oh, not a no, no. Like once Johnny Bananas really became the character, absolutely fell off for me. Early Johnny Bananas was good when he's he was like just the like Boston a, Rob of the challenge. Uh, sort of. I mean, I would say him or CT uh, right. can function like that. But but Johnny Bananas at a certain point like became a personality, and then he like hosted a show on NBC. He had like a whole like I'm a I'm a personality guy. Sure. CT to me is an earnest blue collar laborer who happens to be burdened with the gift of being exceptional at only one kind of athletic endeavor, which happens to be challenges on reality competitions. Like meaningless games, yeah. adult games. Yeah, like I don't know <laughs> if he's any good at football or soccer or basketball or lacrosse. I have no idea, but I know that he works the hell out of this particular kind of challenge. Um, CT, uh, one of the great regrets of my freelance careers, I, I really wanted to write a long form profile of CT. You might now be able to. Yeah, it's uh, genuine. The door has reopened. Um, what truly like what an iconic figure. It's him, amazing arc, seeing him. Also the arc with DM back in the day and her passing. I'm just, uh, I don't know if he's a good person as a person, but as a character, an incredible person. Yeah, as somebody who saw him on the real world as a kid, like yeah. seeing him now in middle age, like yeah. it's very, it's quite moving in the same way that like if you stuck with Survivor, like, when I was a kid, you know, Colby from season two of Survivor, I'm like, oh, like, that's a cowboy. That's yeah. a superhero. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then seeing him reckon with his mortality in, you know, uh, later mm -hmm. Legends seasons of Survivor, it's just, like, it's super jarring. Uh, you know, I've been watching these people on reality TV my whole life. Basically. No, and, like, you know, for everybody who sort of, like, poo-poos reality television, it's like there is an incredible narrative power. You do buy into someone when you see them in these kind of semi-vulnerable or quasi-vulnerable contexts. And I think even someone, it's funny because I was thinking about Alan coming as the TJ Lavin of this, right? Sure. Even TJ Lavin, who right. had like health challenges and kind of got like, you, or that's a, a character. Or an Andy yeah, or probes, whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Although Probst yeah. will never. Yeah, he doesn't crack. He doesn't crack. Although I feel like low key something's up with probes. But like, I, I just, in my heart, I feel like something's up. Like, <laughs> like Princess Kate. Like, I just feel like something's, <laughs> just feel like something's up. You, uh, you're, uh, you're forensically. Yeah, I'm, I'm checking. I'm doing, I'm, the I'm doing the belling cat on, on probes. Yeah. There's something going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what you're referring That's to. That's okay. Just Google it. Everybody <laughs> Google it. Um, no, I mean with the probes thing. I, I don't, don't know what you're like. What could I, possibly? I'm just, I just feel it. Okay. In my gut, I feel it. Okay. I don't All know. Right. All right. Just we'll <laughs> put a pin in it. We'll come back to okay. it. Okay. Uh, so what they did in the second season was instead of regular people and reality people, it's basically half people who play reality show games mm -hmm. and they coined the term seemingly like just like happens and, and, and they're gamers. Yeah. And then there's the Bravo liberties basically yes. on the other side or yes. people who don't play, who may be on reality TV, but don't, don't compete on reality TV. Oh, they compete. So this is the thing because of the housewives really held their own. I mean, I want to hear about your experience diving into the traders universe, but early on, I was blown away by how good Larsa was at the game. Very, Larsa's very there good. with Michael Jordan's son, her boyfriend. Are they still together? So they broke up. At, within the as the season was airing, but then on the reunion, they're like, "We're piecing it back together. Okay. Like we're in a good place." Got it. Okay. They talk about it. I, I think we just hit like a little speed bump. We were moving 100 miles per hour, and we hit a speed bump and needed to kind of reset, regroup, and kind of talk through some stuff. But we're doing fine now. We're like working on our problems. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. now we're communicating better, and we're in a better place. Phaedra, she's the AD of Traders. Like she's the main character of the season. Unbelievable! Such presence a lawyer in real life and a funeral director in real life. <laughs> Incredible. Also, if I'm not mistaken, formerly Bobby Brown's lawyer. Um, if I'm, and, and this is a random anecdote, but when I started at Vibe in 2006, I'm pretty sure the first cover that we did was a Bobby Brown cover. It was like kind of like 
you know, like, uh, what can we do relatively quickly? And if I'm not mistaken, the contact was Phaedra. Wow. I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. But I'm like 80 to 90 percent sure the contact was Phaedra. Incredible. Yeah. She's lived a lot of lives. She's lived a lot of lives. And she, I think, as somebody who is not really tapped in with the Housewives, like I'm not a Housewives viewer. I, I am not. I gave up. So the person who did this in the first season and broke out was Kate Chastain from Below Deck. Yes. Like, that I was always going to watch Below Deck at a certain point in my life. Uh, Kate on season one made it made that time now. Yeah. Uh, just like. Oh, that was your prompt. Yeah. Like, oh, again, I was already coming. Got but it. But she she was like, okay. I was like, OK, I need I need to I need know more everything this. about this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to go from the beginning. Uh, I think Phaedra had that effect this time. And of course, they bring back Kate uh, in season two. Mm. What did you think of the traders diving in in the second season? Okay, um, it was very clear that the traders learned from Big Brother in the sense that they need a character who is also a narrator. This is why Dan is useful. Um, Big Brother Dan, who won once and made it to the final two a second time in like a in like an All Star season, uh, Dan is a very like regular looking, unassuming, affable guy who keeps to himself but stirs up the pot and what dan is is an incredibly effective narrator he learned from big brother confessional how to look square at the camera say this is what i'm doing this is what everyone else is doing here's how it all fits together here's where i've been here's where i think we're going and the fact that he does that so clear to camera but in the game he's a little bit hands off he functions as sort of the like he's the greek choir in sure. a way. um so obviously it's a really effective choice to have the two traders in the beginning him and Phaedra, one from each of the camps. And it's very striking to see how they interact with each other because Dan is truly the ultimate gamer. Dan, he's working, he's working angles constantly. Phaedra, she's doing a different version of it, but Phaedra is a lot more tribal in the sense that she's like, I have my team. Yep. And like, I'm also on a team with you as the trader, but like I'm playing the game very differently and making new friends. You see her connecting with CT. You oh, see yeah. her connecting with Bergie. Phaedra from CT Lala. reality show, oh, like yeah. Phaedra CT, amazing race. They were amazing uh, in the reunion, talking about their chemistry. The sweetest relationship because initially, when he got in the car with us, our car kept breaking down, yes. and I thought he was the mechanic. <laughs> I was like, because he was, he was, he, they would have mechanics. Well, I was the repo man and he was the, uh, the yeah, mechanic. Okay, but just being honest. And so it was the most sweetest, innocent connection ever. So the fact that they come from two different places. Um, also, Dan, regrettably, is a tiny bit rusty. He's horrible at traders. He's horrible at playing the traders. He really slow walked. Like, if he had been playing a hard game from day one, I think it might have turned out and very he differently. That. He learned it. I mean, he realized it in real time. I went on his Wikipedia. Apparently, he's a Twitch streamer now. Oh, wow. Like, he does, like, video game Twitch streaming. Okay. Who knows? So, I, but not, he says, yeah. like, my whole thing in Big Brother is, like, I hold back. I get a feel for everyone. And then I launch into game mode. Uh, but in this case, that resulted in every time someone's like, who do you think is a traitor? He'd he's be like... like he just I freezes. Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's very like, strange. He eventually. Perversely not good at lying for yes. someone whose entire success was predicated it upon was, lying. It was sad to see. And uh, what was particularly interesting is when he finally did the thing that he probably should have done, frankly, on like episode two. Turn on his fellow traitor. Turn on Phaedra. Like, if he's seen season one, he understands the function of the game. If he turns on Phaedra, someone else will be brought in. He'll have some say of who gets brought in. Well, they already also have a third traitor at that point. Oh, uh, is that one? Right, right. From... Okay. But if he understands the gameplay and he sensed that Phaedra and he were not totally in rhythm with each other, he could have immediately made her target number one. Yeah. When he finally goes for her, on the one hand, I'm like, this is the kind of gameplay that this show is premised upon. And he actually, I thought, in that moment was good. But then the minute Phaedra just sort of, like, settles in, is like, are we going to war? I mean, all, she... She's like, all, all them big brother boys want to go to war? Well, then let's get ready. You know, like Pastor Troy blasting in the background. She said, I'm doing too much because you're doing too, too little. Incredible. <laughs> And I think what Dan, as a strategist, underappreciated, because no one on Big Brother speaks clearly. Right. Like, these are not 
geniuses who play Big Brother. So it's easier for Dan or Dr. Will or whatever to manipulate people. Everyone in the Bravo universe is a talker. This is an incredibly verbal show. It was, uh, traitors, I mean, incredibly verbal. It was actually shocking that they were mad at John, the UK parliament guy, for for being too too verbal. (laughs) I'm like, have you looked in the mirror? Everybody here is a talker. And Parv called that out pretty early on, where she's like, we got to be careful with these Bravo people because they're performers. And... But it's funny they don't they don't yeah conceive they're offended them. by that yeah they don't conceive of themselves as performers but I'm like man like we are in the late 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 reality television era like you guys are performers but everyone is verbal but the way that the Bravo folks are verbal is so different from the way that the gamers are verbal yeah it was actually really striking to see Sandra she almost sort totally of split the difference. but almost totally sidelined yeah. and then the minute that there was any light on her got absolutely washed out the paint whereas you think Sandra is the number one person who's going to be able to like thread that though it did get her very far in the game Sandra especially because spoiler survivor person was a traitor and won the first time yeah. like I think that really screwed Parvati like making her a traitor they should have both been faithfuls because the star trader from season one was a survivor person which puts a crazy target on you yes especially when you're known as a manipulative mm-hmm winner yes. or multiple time winner in Sandra's case. So she really didn't have a chance, but she did. And she talked about this a bit in the reunion. Like she played her survivor game, which is she didn't care if a faithful or a traitor got voted out. Didn't matter. Anyone but me. Yes. Which has always been Sandra's game and like lying pretty low. And she st- the fact that she managed to lie low, despite the target on the back of uh, of survivor players. I mean, Parv took, took the Parv heat took all the heat. Um, um, because she's also so flashy. Can we just, speaking of flashy, can we just briefly talk about clothes? <laughs> you can talk about clothes. Okay. So something that happens in a lot of reality television shows of different kinds, dating shows, um, uh, you know, like milieu shows, whatever. But there is a unanimity of how people present themselves. Sure. Like even in Love is Blind, like the kind of like middle brow bro presentation. It's like all kind birds. Of, yeah, exactly. Like Jimmy out here in Lululemon pants. Sure. Like everybody's kind of, and it's not like Clay, obviously. We're just Clay. Clay, where do you get your knit cardigans? Just drop it in the comments. I just would like to know where you do like you get them? your what? You like them? They're interesting. I don't know if I like them. You just want to know. I want to know. I'd like to learn more about the world from which those cardigans uh, emerge. Uh, But even on Love is Blind, for the most part, people kind of dress the same. Obviously, if you're doing like Shaws of Sunset, those folks mostly dress the same. Like you really get the sense of a group of people because most of them are dressing in a roughly unanimous consent way. The thing that I liked so much about traders is like it really felt like the UN. Like yeah. everybody came, a delegation. yeah, like everybody came in the the sort of uh, traditional costume of their tribe, <laughs> right. whether it be Bravo Housewives, whether it be like a random guy uh, on Survivor or Big Brother. Every the, the Bachelor who just like looked like the Bachelor, yeah, Peter, yeah, Peter, just doing his thing, yeah, Pilot and, Peter. And I really, really found it admirable that there wasn't some sets. Also, it's very clear that people had stylists because when they showed up right. to breakfast in the morning, like everybody was like absolutely turned out. And Parvati, the sets, the head the pieces, headbands. she made the headbands a thing. Unbe- she went full Blair Waldorf. Absolutely amazing. Like it was a visual treat to watch this show because I really liked seeing how each person brought the specifics of their backstory into their outfits. But also great for someone like Parver, like Kate, who in their home shows have to wear a uniform, yes. basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Parv, Parv did her thing on many seasons of Survivor mm-hmm. with the buff and the bathing suit, yeah. but mm-hmm. you know, it's limited mm-hmm. the amount of clothing they can wear. Kate's always in a uniform, yes. but seeing them be able to express Yeah, like themselves. when Kate showed up in like the brown leather their dress yeah. like absolutely and near the end when she's wearing the all white and, and with the top like you're dressed like a traitor, traitor. she's like thank you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know no i found i really it's a I, I don't know if anybody's written about that but it's a really i think one of the more powerful parts of the show because you really like a lot of the narrative is embedded in the clothing like right. when you're seeing like the kevin the bling empire guy and you're like he's like a little bit of a himbo and he's dressed like a himbo right. like and it's like he's he's like yeah like it's it's unselfconscious right so Admirable. the traders get spotted pretty quickly in this season. They kind of <laughs> the game is sort of broken very early on. Is that different than it was in the first season? Yes, for sure. Okay. 
uh, I mean, they oh, they know because now off the I bat. feel like I'm going to go back and watch and watch the other ones yeah, and, and some yeah. foreign ones. Yeah. yeah, they know off the bat it's Parv. They know off the bat it's Stan. Phaedra lays extremely low, lays partially low. because no other Bravo person would believe but that it could be. people are also onto her. Like, Trishel, as soon as Dan turns on Phaedra, yeah. like, he did that because she's also a traitor. Which was the most obvious thing. I can't believe no one listened to Trishel. They call out the eye tick. Listen to... Which then continues to recur. Yeah. Like, uh, she doesn't, like, compensate yeah. for it. Like, she keeps doing it. They change the rules a bunch to basically keep some of these people in the game longer. They bring in Kate. They they, oh, yeah. they let Parv stay, like, two more episodes after she's definitely going to get found out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Peter's leading the charge, sort of like has has a little alliance and they're and lays a out. trap. The thing that a I did trap that works, but but this was baffling to me. He lays a trap where he doesn't say who got the shield, which like protects people from getting whatever. But he doesn't say, and it's like it's him. Essentially, it's him and Bergy, who's yeah. like from Love Island. I have not seen that season of that Love guy, Island. I, I want to watch his season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love the idea of him being thrown to the wolves. Yeah. Um, but essentially, there's like six people involved in the scam, but it's really just Peter and Bergy. But immediately, Dan and Parv are like, he's lying. But then they no, still- Parv calls it out. But, okay, so Parv- And he does, and Dan steps into the trap. Okay, she I knows. thought they agreed. No, no, she's like, so by she, the way, he's trying to double cross us. So and he's like, but I still got to get Bergy. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. Okay, he, I thought they both he thought was he was lying. so bad. Yeah, it's unfortunate. He was so bad at the game. Rusty. Anyway, this brings us sort of to the end and how the game, it doesn't really know how to wrap up. Well, they did. The, I will say, so should we say who won? We say... Yeah, sure. So, okay. So, ultimately, C.T. and Trishel win. But in the episodes leading up to the end, where they were explaining how the money gets allocated, I was thinking, what a great time for an alliance to emerge and absolutely box out everybody else. And so, it turns out that after they finally accept that Kate is a traitor and get rid she of her. She gives up, basically. She, she votes to end the game, even though there's a traitor left. Yeah. When everybody knows that there's a traitor left. Yes. So she's basically like, and she says it, and she says it after, and she said it on Twitter. She was just like, I didn't want to play anymore. Like, they deserve the money. Like, yeah. I was barely in the show. Like, which is a flaw of the show, that <laughs> you can do that. Huge flaw of the show. But then this next thing, which I thought was sort of an interesting twist, once you're down to just the faithful, whoever many are left, there, was she, three there were three CT, Trishel, and MJ. But if it was three or five or seven, you have to keep eliminating people or until you come to an agreement that everybody who's left is a faithful and you want to share the money equally. Now, I'm thinking, what a great time for an alliance to box people out. But I'm like, I guess there's no way that will actually happen. And then it happened. But they did it by accident. By accident. They yeah. sh okay, so Trishel and CT go way back. Yeah. They've known each other for 20 years. They've been on TV with each other many times. I would love to do a Metrograph screening of the real world Vegas season yes. with Trishel. Yes. Just what an epic season. Yes. Really, really a great season. Highly recommend. So they basically almost have full trust in each other, but have splintered in the previous vote. And then there's MJ M she she was there. MJ was there. MJ you know, was one there. of the great memes M of the season is MJ sort of like bouncing in place, looking lost, uh, which she carried all the way to the finale. The thing about MJ that's very funny is every single vote, she was like, I know in my heart that so-and-so <laughs> is a traitor, and I will be so broken <laughs> if they turn out to be a faithful. And, and every, she's wrong every time, almost every time. Always yeah. wrong. And then every time she's like, this time, though. Yeah. They could have easily just gotten her out because they knew they were all, they should have known they were all faithful. Yeah. Just vote to get her out so they could split the money one less way. Yes. Trishel crumbles, gets paranoid, votes against her CT. closest ally in the game, CT. Although you they, and then she you says, she says, he she, looks broken. She says, fallen. she changed her vote the second time. Of course. It tie, they have a tie. But also, MJ's not smart enough to have taken advantage of that, like, seeing that that was happening. Also, they're so close to each other. Of course. They Can't know, you see? Especially when one person's name is only two, two letters. letters. And the other person's, like, ten letters. MJ should have voted the first time for CT. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, then she would have known. Absolutely. Anyway, but this became a huge controversy. CT and Trishel have been treated like absolute villains online. MJ was extremely angry 
at the finale. Oh, at the I reunion. thought it was good gameplay. It was good gameplay, but accidentally. And this is where like it's just it's it's a quite inelegant game. And it's like it, I feel like if some puzzle minds sat down, you for, need like, a game theory. An person. afternoon, yeah, you need a game. Theory like you person. can fix the traders. The traders is good because of the mix of personalities, but it seems way more fun to play than it is to watch. Okay, but here's why the traders for me did not work that much. I would like to see an episode, a season of the traders where no people have pre-existing public personalities right. or no public personalities. Oh, all regulars, all regulars. But that's, I think that's what the Australian version is. Okay. And the reason is I'm so busy either expecting a certain kind of gameplay from each individual or triangulating my knowledge with how someone is actually playing. Which they do to one another also. Right. Which is fine. But to me, I'm, it takes a, it's, you want character development. And frankly, there isn't any character development. Maybe Peter right. is the closest you have to Seeing character development. Seeing a non-gamer be really good a gamer. at a game yes. was cool. Or even like understanding that like seeing what Phaedra was doing as actually being a gamer, but just not in the way that any of the other folks could be. Like Phaedra was pulling a Sandra. Yes. But doing it with different language, different sartorial expression, different laying low, different ally, uh, different alliance forming. She was doing a Sandra. But if you watch the Bravo universe, and I don't watch Housewives anymore, but I understand who, who those folks are. And like, I understand what roles they play in their home team on their home team. It wasn't quite as exciting as like watching people form that stuff in real time. And that's one of my general frustrations with like all-star seasons of sure. Survivor or Big Brother or whatever. You're never really going to get someone who's going to win twice anymore. Like it's really unlikely. I mean, Tony pulled it off fairly recently. Yes. Although I, there's something about Tony where I think people were just like the first one was dumb. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah, there's they're, no like, way this guy's really, going to be able to yeah, do it again. couldn't possibly happen. Um, <laughs> But it's um, also why I dislike Superfan. It's, it's, it's people who have such fixed ideas on the narrative of how the show is supposed to go and how you're supposed to play the show, especially with something like Traders, which is a relatively new concept. I'd love to see it and watch people. More raw. And watch people. Like, it's like you um, inject the, the dye into the blood and you watch all the directions. Yeah. I, there are untested directions on this show. There should be more alliance forming. There should be more vote block stuff. Um, there should be more traitors killing traitors. Yep. Like, like there's so many things that have yet to happen, but I think it's going to be hard to have those things happen if everybody comes into the game with a pre-existing idea of how they're supposed to be. This brings us, I think, to the new season of Survivor, which mm -hmm. we'll do a couple minutes yeah. on just because it just started. Yeah. We're two episodes in when we're taping this. And Survivor, in the modern era, we're at, what, this is 46? 46, I think. Say the last, since COVID, the last mm -hmm. four the or five Fiji, seasons. The Fiji, all the Fiji stuff. All the Fiji seasons. It has a casting problem. Survivor only casts one type of person now. And it's like touchy-feely, millennial, super fan Everybody cries. Everybody's neurotic. Everybody's seen every episode and is constantly referencing other characters. Yeah, there's no characters. jocks, really. There's, there's no, there's no alphas. There's no hot people. Like, Survivor used to be, like, the the early Survivor seasons are all smart people versus hot people yeah. for, like, the first five episodes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, you just barely get that anymore. And, like... Although I do think, just to briefly interrupt, the one thing that Survivor is successfully doing is diversifying the casting. It does feel, look, yes, it feels like- but it's all one type of No, no, I, I agree you with, I, I, mean? I do agree with that, but it's like a lot of television, whether it's reality or scripted, is so kind of self-conscious about diversification. And I do think whenever there was like a CBS mandate, I think yes. at a certain point, whenever that mandate went into effect, I think it actually really, really helped Survivor. Because it, it, I do think like, you had very similar kinds of guys and, and girls on earlier seasons. And I do feel like it has spread that out a little bit. And I, But that said, there are always people who are truly neurotic. So neurotic. There are always people who are crying. There are always people who are failing 
in some emotional way. I think I said this on a previous episode. It's like it's almost all nerds. It's like ninety yeah. percent nerds. Yes. Now, mm-hmm. which like fine, fine, great. Mm-hmm. The nerd is a survivor archetype. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, but Cochran it was is a legendary Cochran. survivor, right? But it's an player, archetype because it was a them. one-off. It's, it's no, an but archetype. There's, there's, there's no, no, each season. Yes. I'm saying in earlier seasons, it was yes. like, oh, that's the one, yes. or that's the two, or yes. they're in a relate. The the two are going to become relationship buddies. And there's a couple wild card, a couple like throwbacks. I think like they've started to bring back in the last season or two a lot of old school survivor stuff that they had cut out. Like they brought back the auction last year, Mm -hmm. the intro, uh, you know, and I think a little bit in the casting choices, like you have uh, Q uh, in this one, Mm -hmm. who's like a a Southern jock Mm -hmm. basically, and is really good at everything, really personable. Like he's in the, you know, he's in the James mold from Mm -hmm. way back in the day. And he's sort of like a, he's a vintage survivor player but then he's surrounded only with this sort of new like tech employee <laughs> survivor contestant right and what's funny is you can see him struggling yes. with that yes so a team athlete yeah. right and literally looking at his team and being like how did like the guy what? just the guy he does the first challenge just the, gives up and yeah he's like, he's what literally like here? what draft was i in that this is who i ended up with yeah. and you could see it's breaking him and he's so proud and so noble that he doesn't want to be broken, but it's like he's literally like, "Why did you put me on island with literally no person who can do a single thing?" I just need the ratio to be yeah. corrected. I need got to balance back out. I need a better ratio because like it is so. I just cringe so much now watching almost every episode, and yep. it it goes on so long. There's been bright spots over the last few seasons, but I really think we're in a casting rut, even though. It's still like it's only because they set the bar so high as being one of the best cast things, of course, ever. You know, it's like so they've discovered so many people. The the mixes are always insane. Like I'm just, it just feels too samey, and I'm like a little out on this season because of that. Yeah, I'm also right, and I'm out because I do think instead of triumph to triumph, it's really breakdown to breakdown. Yes, you know, like the, I mean, literally, Banu, like second episode, Jess, everybody other, cried. Yeah, yeah, Jess having a really hard time, tears and tears and tears and tears. Yes, and it's very one note. One other thing, just that reminded me that I would like to see on the traders from coming from Survivor. Everybody's sitting at the round table. Why is there not more? Yeah. Whispering, whispering in yeah. people's ears, and Who like voting for last or, minute conniving, yeah. eye contact. Like everybody's so like standing on, sitting on ceremony, yeah. and I'm just like, no, get messy. Yeah, like when, if when, if not now. Nobody has disrupted traders yet yes. in the American edition. I can't speak for for the foreign mm-hmm. versions, but it is really ripe for disruption. And somebody, if this if, show continues, which I think it will because of its popularity, yeah. like it is going to get Survivor. It needs, Survivored or Big Brother. It needs a Dan. And it needs yes, a vintage Dan. There's going to be some yeah. revolution within the Traders universe, and yeah. I think it will be a way better show because of it. Totally agree. No songs this week, um, since we're doing a little bit more of a themed episode. I'm just going to listen to my Love is Blind playlist, <laughs> which is some of the worst music ever created. It's really, really bad. Astonishing. It seems to be placed via keyword. Like, there's a database, and if somebody says, like, my mom got broken up with, yeah, yeah. then the, there's the like song, a song. the lyric is, like, my mama had her heart broken. You know, it's mm-hmm. just, like, it's so literal. It's the fakest. It's, like, somehow even faker than the fake Bravo music, which is, do like, you, made in a sweatshop somewhere. Do you think that those songs pre-exist, or you think that after the season is, like, edited, like, roughly edited, they throw like a male singer, a female singer, a guy with a guitar, a guy with a piano, and like someone on drums into a studio and just make them watch it and do like live, like a live play oh, along. I think it is made for the show, yes. like the Bravo music. I do. I think it's like plucked from the cheapest possible library. Like, did you Shazam any of it? <laughs> no, but like they say the artists on the screen. No, I know, the... but did you Shazam it to see if anybody <laughs> in history has ever Shazammed it before? <laughs> I, I. I will do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm um, gonna I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna make the playlist. Uh if you do have a great song that you've learned about via like Love is Blind or any There's no such thing. Okay, I'd just be curious to hear it at Popcast on my times like up. So we're gonna go to snack. Uh last week Sawyer had just come back from Brazil, hit us with the lime and passion fruit 
Snickers, rare, rare flavored regional Snickers. Um, this is I also, also a regional a delicacy. I also took a trip recently. I was in LA. And if you ask, if the next question you're asking is, John, did you go to Erewhon? The answer is yes. If the next question you're asking is, John, at Erewhon, did you get the Haley Bieber Skin Alive Shake for $21? The answer is also yes. Is there a bowl and a smoothie? I only had the smoothie. Is there I both? I only saw a sign okay. for the smoothie. I don't, I'm not an Erewhon. I've never been to Erewhon. Um, and if you're asking me, was it delicious? The answer is emphatically yes. Wow. Genuinely Surprise. enjoyed it. Would love to have it uh, near my house. Legitimately so. healthy? Sure. It had like a bunch of ingredients that I don't normally ingest. Okay. That's so, what I figured. So probably that's yes. That's why I was surprised you liked it. Um, so I, I thought where better to find an unusual off-brand snack to bring back to the show. Uh, and so what company? What's this called? These are 12 Tides Organic Kelp Snacks. I am so sorry. <laughs> Puffed kelp chips What's in the compostable packaging. That's a blessing. What Truffle is and pepper flavor. Sure. Uh, have you ever had a kelp chip? Not that I know of. Oh, of course. <laughs> the compostable packaging is a paper straw in that it doesn't work. <laughs> you saw that. that was very funny. I tried to pull the tab. That was legitimately very and funny. It crumbled in my fingers. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah. Okay. All right. I really feel like we're doing these a disservice by eating them raw and not as a vehicle for like hummus or something. No, but like, how am I going to know? How are we going to know if the flavor hits or not? They are exactly. I don't want a hummus to mask it. They're exactly the color that you think they are. How's the smell? I kind of like the smell. Truffly. Okay. Um, this is, is this our second truffled snack? Truffle is big on the snack market. No, no, I know, but yeah. I'm saying like it's our second. Show. Yeah, it must be. Um, I'm not even going to read the ocean positive packaging uh, copy. Oh, it is an interesting smell. Yeah, I like the smell. What if they're really good? I mean, I think they cost like $9. Woo. Mm. Uh -huh. um, mm? No, I'm not eating another. If I was on a desert island <laughs> and the helicopter came. On Survivor. If I was on Survivor, if I got voted off Survivor and they're like, sorry, you can't have a cheeseburger. All we've got are these kelp chips. I would be like, these are, fi these are fine. But if I paid $9 for them, I would riot. They're disgusting. Are they? There's a lot of truffle flavor. Like, they're quite salty. They're um, very oceany. It has this problem that a lot of um, chips that are not potato chips sure. have, which is... Fake chips. Yeah, like, this kind of, chips. like, unanim this structure. Yeah. Where it's, like, everything is exactly the same width. Yeah. They're very sturdy. The shape is fake, obviously. Yeah. It's kind of like, what's a what's a scoopable shape? Like, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a fake shape. Yeah, it looks like a giant Frito a little bit. I, I do find the smell lightly tantalizing. Sure. It like the pepper. Smells expensive. The pepper really comes through in the yeah. smell. The chewing experience of it is really anticlimactic. It's like deep fried cardboard. It's joyless. It's definitely joyless. It's really joyless. Um, it's a two out of maybe ten. You're, maybe you're right with a scoop of something. Yeah, but it's sure. like as but, a vehicle, they wouldn't be the most offensive thing in the but world. But like to be honest, I think a chip should be able to stand on its own. Almost so, always. Not a healthy chip, though. A healthy chip is only edible with a topping or a dip. I'm going to go three and a half. I, I find, I'm a flat I find the pep I find the peppery kick appealing. It's a little spicy for you? It, it is. I'm feeling like my tongue is like, hey, yo. Like, it's great. No, I like that part. But it's, it's unimaginative. And it's not, um, like, if you are a parent giving these to your child... I mean, you they're, live in Los Angeles. Is yeah, that the end no, of that absolutely. Like, they're going to be extremely upset when they learn about what the rest of the world is like. <laughs> yes. Simply what I want to say. That is our show. Every podcast ever is at nytimes.com slash podcast. Joe and I are on Podcast Deluxe, youtube.com slash podcast. Like and subscribe. Uh, get the mugs and other ephemera. Get the doggy bowl uh, on our Zazzle Skateboard. storefront. Get the deck. 
uh, on our Zazzle storefronts, type in Popcast, you'll see it. Uh, it's the popcast.myshopify.com is where the stickers are and so on and so forth. Tinyurl.com slash popcast Facebook and popcast Discord is where uh, all the fans are congregating to ask questions. Email us. We're probably going to put a post on the Facebook and Discord to solicit questions. Email us, though, popcast.nytimes.com with questions for an upcoming mailbag episode or commentary about great reality television uses of music. Sure. There's this thing now where the people watching The Hills and Luna Beach and all that don't have the licensed pop songs from the day. Oh, so are they like they're filler putting music in filler in music? Oh, yeah. It's horrible. The youth doesn't know what they're missing. I'm so sorry. Buy suck. physical media. Literally. Um, wow. Yeah. It's dark. That's really bad. Yeah. Uh, anyway, email us, podcast at nytimes.com. Uh, our senior producer, Story Okay. Pat Gunther's in the room today. Our editor is Jamie Heffitz. Special thank you to Nell Galogli, Leslie Davis, Karen Gans, Pedro Rosado. We're going to be back next week. Okay?